All right, we're here with the McClanahan guys. I got Bruce on my left, and I got Brad on my right. Brad's from the Australia office. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. We really appreciate it. And um, now talk a little bit about what you guys do. And I tell you what, we're standing right in front, I think, of what these guys are all about. So Bruce, how about you? Talk a little bit about this great looking, cool looking piece of machinery. Yeah, well, we're a supplier of uh, feeding and crushing equipment, mineral processing equipment to the mining industry, and in this case, focusing on coal. This is a two-roll sizer that uh, will crush coal down to about a two-inch product from uh, after a primary crush. This will do the secondary tertiary type of crush and, and on to the uh, further process. So uh, this particular machine will be a part of a mobile crushing station, and we sequestered it for the to have in our booth here at the show. So what kind of rig do you need to haul these things around if it's a mobile crushing station? This particular unit will go on a chassis with a crawler, a mobile crawler assembly underneath. And it'll also have a feeding mechanism and then a takeaway discharge conveyor on it as well. Now talk about what your machine does to benefit the coal prep industry, or the coal prep process. Well, it, it uh, reduces the mineral in size. So you mine the coal, obviously you've got large run of mine sizes that have to be reduced in size through crushing stages so that it can be processed and eventually used as a fuel source. Okay. Now Brad, you're from Australia in the Australian yeah. office. Talk a little bit about the relationship between the Australian office and the office here in the US. Okay, well the Australian office was set up in 2003 by Mike McClanahan um, to capture the uh, coal market in Australia. Um, and we've diversified uh, beyond coal to do a lot of other um, industries, but primarily coal is, is still our big ticket item. And um, uh, we've been uh, slowly but surely manufacturing and um, uh, providing the industry down there with, uh, with some beautiful pieces of equipment like this and, uh, and a lot more as well. So we're pretty happy with the, um, the support that we get from our, from our big brothers in, uh, in the U.S. and um, they've helped us grow and be the company we are today. Now you guys know that, especially here in the U.S., there are some challenges for the coal industry. Now, guys, I'll tell you what, let's talk about the differences of the challenges here in the U.S. versus the challenges that happen in Australia. Let's, talk, let's start with you, Brad. Well, primarily, the challenges will, will virtually be the same. You know, we have, uh, uh, in Australia, we've just had a government that's um, provided us with a mining tax and a, um, uh, a, a uh, what is it, a um, carbon tax. That has been so detrimental to not only the coal industry, but all other mining industries. We have had a change of government since and that is likely to change in, uh, in a very short period of time, which we feel will benefit the industry in general. Now, Bruce, you know, you're here in the U.S. Talk about the challenges going forward here with the rest of 2014 into 2015 and beyond. It's just a really tough market right now. As Brad stated, uh, we face a lot of the same challenges. I think Australia is very much like the United States in the fact that we have a certain faction of people here that are really driving the green side of things and trying to eliminate all carbon fuels, which of course is a main part of our business. So it's just a challenge to turn the mentality around uh, almost from a, a religious belief of the people that are trying to get rid of the carbon fuels to let them, uh, to get them to believing and turn the public into believers that uh, carbon fuels are still variable, viable and cheap source of energy. We need to use those. Nothing wrong with trying to make things cleaner. We all understand that. But to eliminate these industries altogether, we think, is just the wrong thing to do. And uh, so we need to keep educating the public, I believe, and uh, get better leadership in Washington, in my opinion. Now, how long have you guys been with Coal Prep? I know you're one of the mainstays here at the show. We've been here, I think you, we said last year, when did you start in 81 or 82, something like that? Uh, Coal uh -huh. Prep started. Sure. And uh, we've been here every year since it started. I've been here personally since 94 when I started with McClanahan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's been, what, 20 years now for me coming to this show in Lexington. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, how about you? How, long, how many years have you been coming to Coal Prep? Well, I've been here four times now and um, since 2003. Obviously, they haven't come every year, but um, uh, Lexington's a beautiful place to have a, uh, a, a show like this. And uh, it's right. always a pleasure to be invited. So, yeah, I'm very, very happy. So now, Bruce, talk about the benefits of exhibiting at Coal Prep. What do you guys get out of it when you've been coming here for so long? Well, I think we have a lot to offer to the coal preparation 
business. And uh, we like to come here and meet with our customers and display our products. And uh, obviously some years are better than others. Uh, we've gotten more bang for our buck than others. This, this is a particular slow year, as, as probably anyone can attest that's been here at the show. But uh, normally we're here to let people know what we're all about, what new products we have to offer, and uh, to just make sure we stay in close contact with our, our customers. So uh, why don't you talk about some of those new products? Well, one of, one of the things we've been pushing hard for the last few years is our filter press technology. And here at the show, we have an outdoor exhibit that uh, where we have a test or a pilot filter press that's on a trailer, and we pull it up and let everybody crawl all over it and get a good look at it. But that's something we're pretty excited about because it allows the producers to recover the fine coal particulates, eliminate their settling ponds, and it's, it's a piece of equipment that is good for the environment. And uh, it's been moving pretty well so far. Excellent. Well, I'll tell you what, gentlemen, thanks a lot. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to speak with us. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank All right. You.